Hello again, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today's class is Introduction to the Internet of Things. So this is an amazing new paradigm shift that's going on in computers and networking and technology, and something that you should really, really know about and understand. So whenever you're thinking about technology, wherever you're thinking about where you should put your career in technology, and where to make money in technology, you should understand that in our business, we go through what are called paradigm shifts, where we start focusing on specific types of technology and basically trying to mine as much money as possible out of that. So way back when, back when I was a kid, back when I was like in high school, we went through the age of the PC, the personal computer. So way back then, people didn't have personal computers generally, and so there was a big wave of installing personal computers in everybody's home. And then we went to internet, so everybody started using the internet, web pages, we had the dot com boom. Past that, you know, into uh, into the 2000s, we've had things such as convergence. So convergence is where you stop having siloed different types of technology and you actually use TCP IP and Ethernet connectivity for all of your, your different electronic communications, whether it's email and file sharing or voice over IP and digital surveillance. Well, the Internet of Things is one of these new paradigm shifts and it's very important for you to understand because this is one of the places where there's going to be a lot of money to make in the future. So the basic concept, the basic concept of the Internet of Things is that everything, or almost everything, will be able to be connected in an Internet-like fashion. So what does that really mean? What that means is, you know, we have gone from computers being able to communicate with a network to, to like smartphones being able to communicate with a network to tablets and all of those things. And all of those things still like look like computer devices. But going forward, what we're going to be dealing with is devices that don't look so computer-like. So right now we have things like the Nike Fitbit. So the Nike Fitbit is actually this little this little puck thing you put in your running shoe and it tracks how far you run. So basically that little device goes in your running shoe, it tracks how far you've run, it sends that information up to your iPod or your iPhone, that iPhone then looks at it and looks at the data that's been sent to it and figures out things like how many calories you've burnt over an amount of time. So basically what we're looking at with the Internet of Things is we are looking at more and more of these computer type network devices that look less and less like computers that we would normally think about and more and more basically like little little pucks. So basically things like again the Nike Fitbit or things like like RFID tags. So these are the, the uh, radio frequency ID tags. These are the new versions of barcodes. So basically with RFID tags, you can actually stick a sticker onto an object and then you can wave a wand around the room and it will pick up all of the RFID tags in the room. So why this is nice is imagine a pallet of goods comes off a truck. Instead of having to scan every single barcode on that pallet of goods, you can wave a wand over the pallet. It will pick up all the RFID information and then it will tell you everything that is on the pallet. So when we're talking about the, this, this internet of things, basically it is thinking about how everything can be tagged uh, with some kind of computer readable information and how that data can be sent. So it can be as simple as an RFID tag on individual cartons of eggs or cartons of milk, or it can be something like a Fitbit, or it can be a little weather station, let's say that's outside of your house, that communicates information inside the house so you can see what the weather forecast, all of those kinds of things are like. So basically when we're talking about the Internet of Things, we're just talking about how can we put this computer network type device onto almost anything and then what can we do with it? So literally it is to the point um, that, that Cisco was talking about how do we tag our clothes so we know which clothes have been washed and which clothes have not. 
So imagine, and this, sound, and this sounds dumb. I mean, it sounds sci-fi, but it also sounds dumb. And you're probably thinking, Eli, what does it matter whether or not my clothes have been washed? But think about if you're a mom and you have four kids and you know you're going to go out to a special event on Sunday. And so it's Saturday and you're wondering, okay, my kids are going to have to dress nice for the event tomorrow. Are those clothes clean? Imagine if the mom could sit down at her little computer terminal and actually pull up and see all their, her kids' clothes that are dirty and all her kids' clothes that are clean. So she could see, okay, three of the kids, their Sunday, Sunday best clothes are clean, but one of the kids is still dirty. Oh, I need to throw that in the washer. These are the types of things that we're talking about. This is really, like when you start talking about the internet of things, you really start have to start stretching your imagination to think about what is a computer device and also what is networking. So when we're talking about the internet of things, one of the important concepts here is we're not talking about computers the way that we normally think about computers. So when we normally think about computers, we think about monitors, we think about keyboards, we think about mice, we think about printers. Well, in the Internet of Things, we just simply have to start thinking about input-output. So a keyboard, right, a keyboard is an input device. A mouse is an input device. Well, so is an accelerometer. So is a pedometer. So is a temperature sensor. So is a GPS sensor. So think with these little Internet of Things computers, instead of having keyboards attached to them, they may simply have a temperature sensor or they may simply have a GPS sensor. Then the output is sending that data out to the outside world. Now, when we start thinking about the Internet of Things, remember, as I said before, this is Internet-like communication. So this is very important to understand. Within the Internet of Things, within the networking of the Internet of Things, we are about where we were in about 1992 as far as networking is concerned. So any of you guys that have gone out to get your certification test, I know for me, you know, you learned TCP IP and you learned about Ethernet and you learned about 802.11, A, B, G, and N and all that, right? Well, a lot of us, you know, we learn about it, but we forget that there was also token ring. There was also IPX, SPX protocols. There was also net buoy. So way back in the old days, there used to be a lot of ways to connect computers in a local area network, a lot of different protocols to use. There were, the computers were still sharing files, they were still sending email, but, but the, the, the fundamental way that they did it was much different than the standard way that we have nowadays of simply using Ethernet, wireless Ethernet, and TCP IP. Well, with this Internet of Things, this is something to keep in mind because the way these little devices communicate may not necessarily be with TCP IP or wireless Ethernet, it may be through things like RFID, those radio frequency ID tags, NFC, near field communication, Bluetooth, or other types of the, these, these wireless communication technologies that are not necessarily Wi-Fi. So this is one of the things that you, you have to think about when you're thinking about the Internet of Things. Now, how this works in the real world, then, is all of these little devices are communicating generally back to some kind of base station or controller or detector and then that is the unit that has TCP IP and Ethernet built in and then can send the communication off to the servers or out to the internet etc. So basically you could wave a, uh, a reader, a RFID reader around in a room, it will pick up all of the information from the room, goes into the RFID reader that gets sent back to a server, and then once it gets to the server, that information is sent over TCP, IP, and Ethernet out to the outside world. So very important thing to understand with the Internet uh, of Things is that this is not necessarily using TCP, IP, or wireless Ethernet. Basically, this, this may be using, again, RFID, uh, RFID, RFID, NFC, something like that. The other thing that you need to be thinking about when you're thinking about the Internet of Things is how are these devices going to be powered? So again, when you're dealing with big computers, 
power is a huge issue. Again, I mean, these things burn anywhere between 100 to 700 or 800 watts. I mean, that, that's a lot of power. So you're thinking, well, Eli, these, these, little, these little stickers that you're slapping on things or these little pucks or whatever, how are you going to power those? Well, the amazing thing with this new type of technology that's being used with the Internet of Things is that they consume very little power so they will last a surprising amount of time. So I have a little, again, I, ha I have a personal Nike Fitbit that goes in my running shoe. So the Nike Fitbit goes in my running shoe. It sends information to my iPod. Then I plug my iPod into the computer and it sends it off to Nike server. So again, that's kind of how this whole Internet of Things work. The little device sends back to another unit, that unit then communicates with the servers, and then once it gets up to the servers, it does whatever. Well, that little Nike Fitbit, I have actually had for about three years now, and it still works a-okay. So something to think about with this, 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 the power consumption is they actually take much less power than you may realize. So when I'm talking about RFID stickers, these radio frequency ID stickers, there's something called active and passive. So active stickers actually have sensors built into them and they send out data. So a passive RFID sticker is simply a sticker that has some kind of serial number in it. So you wave the wand around the room and you get the serial number and that's it. That's it. Active RFID tags actually can collect data such as temperature or shock. So if you have an item um, that isn't supposed to be dropped or it might break, there can actually be a sensor in that RFID, RFID tag that will detect if that item is impacted. Or if you are trying to send, let's say, food goods and the temperature has to be within a certain range, that RFID tag can detect if the temperature goes above a certain level or below a certain level. So those are called active RFID tags. Now the amazing things, as I was sitting down, I was talking with one of these vendors of RFID tags and uh, I was asking, asking him about how these things are powered and he said, Eli, that's a sad thing with these active RFID tags. They, they really... You, you know, their, their battery just doesn't last long enough. Their, their charge just doesn't last long enough. And I looked at him. I was like, oh, really? Well, well, how do you use these things? And he said, well, you know, it lasts for about a year. But really, that's not as long as we want. So imagine, that's not long enough for them, a little sticker that you can slap on almost anything that has these little sensors on it can actually last for a year and if you wave the RFID scanner around, you can grab the information that is collected. That's an amazing thing. So when you're thinking about the Internet of Things, not only do you have to think about the, the way that they communicate data being different, the way that they collect data being different, but also the way they are powered. So again, with these little devices, they may be able to last for years with whatever charge has been installed in them. Or, a lot of these devices now can actually be powered by the movement of the human body. So they're talking about putting computers into people's shoes. One of the reasons they talk about putting into people's shoes is since you walk around so much, the action of walking can be used to power these devices. So these are all of the types of things that you should be thinking about with the Internet of Things. So the idea with the Internet of Things, again, it is that everything, especially Essentially, everything will be connected in an internet-like fashion, right? Not, not actually TCP IP necessarily, in an internet-like fashion. So your carton of milk will actually have a sensor on it. So it'll detect whether it's full or whether it's empty. It'll have a temperature reading on it. Basically, you'll be able to, like, when you close your refrigerator door with these RFID tags, your refrigerator will be able to tell you everything that is within it. So let's say you have a teenage kid, they drink all the milk, they throw the carton away, and they don't tell you about that. Well, before you go grocery shopping, you can actually have the, the, uh, the, the refrigerator refrigerator send you a shopping list and show you oh there's no more milk in the refrigerator or oh you know you bought milk three weeks ago 
and it's still there, but you probably don't want to drink it. So when you're thinking about this Internet of Things, again, we're thinking about putting computers that can communicate in shoes. We're thinking about putting these devices onto things like uh, milk cartons, just all kinds of different things uh, that we can do. So the Internet of Things is an absolutely amazing concept and this is something that you should be thinking about how to deploy either to your business or to your clients. With these devices, they're becoming uh, more and more inexpensive. So again, something like a Nike Fitbit only costs $30 now, but if you go down to those active RFID tags, you can actually buy them for a couple of dollars a piece. So they're still a little expensive, but they're getting less and less expensive every day. It will soon come to the point that, you, that basically this communication, this computer device can be installed into almost anything when it is manufactured and it will simply go out the door. So instead of having to put a Nike Fitbit manually into my shoe, that will automatically already be installed in my shoe. So these are some of the things to think about. So this class was the introduction to the Internet of Things. Again, below, uh, there, there, there's going to be some, some, some places that, that you can read about all of this, some, some of the bibliography. This is something that you should definitely be taking a look at because this is where everything is going now. So we, we went through the era of the mobile, like the mobile being really cool, you know, social, Facebook and really cool. That's where all the money is. Right now everything is going to this whole concept of the internet of things because this is where a lot of money and a lot of possibility is it's literally imagination is the limit when it comes to the internet of things so as always I enjoy teaching this class and I look forward to seeing you at the next one